Hello everyone, welcome to Lost in the Episode. This is your host, Sean. This is our new segment where we will be covering new and returning television shows. In the first episode, we will cover the first couple of episodes of every season and give our first impressions. Then tune in with us every single week where we cover each episode with a spoiler recap and review. And then finally, we will talk about the season finale and give our final thoughts on the season. Today we're going to start out with my first impressions of episodes one through four of CBS All Access's The Stand. <laughs> The Stand is a limited series based on Stephen King's epic novel from CBS All Access. It will be premiering each of its episodes every Thursday, so make sure to tune in with us every Friday to get your spoiler recap and review. I am a huge fan of Stephen King's work uh, and some of his adaptations. Not all of them are great. We did get last year's The Outsider from HBO. I thought that was phenomenal. Uh, it actually ended up on my top 10 TV shows of 2020. So even though I wasn't familiar with the stand, the novel itself, I was very excited for this series. The Stand is all about a group of survivors who have lived past this terrible plague that's decimated the entire world. They've been able to live through this plague because they have an immunity to the virus. They start to set up camp in this small little town that is led by Mother Abigail, who is a prophet from God, who has handpicked five humans to govern this town. They slowly start to realize that there is an evil and nefarious presence that is coming to ruin everything that they've tried to rebuild. So, according to the synopsis of the story, there is a battle of epic biblical proportions that's about to happen. But we are only four episodes in, and I only want to talk about where we are so far. So what we've gotten is a lot of character development and a lot of build-up. There is this sense that there is something exciting and amazing that's about to happen, and you can almost just feel the show kind of like bubbling to the surface, like it just wants to explode, but nothing's really happened yet. Really, we've just gotten to get to know all of these characters uh, that are making up this story and who are going to lead us to this epic battle. So The Stand uses a very interesting timeline to tell its story. It's very reminiscent of the lost flashback way of telling a story. I don't know if it necessarily works because we keep jumping back and forth from what happened before the pandemic to get to know these characters and then we move into what's happening now and also all in the middle too and it's just it seems a little scattered to me so I'm not a huge fan I wish that they had kind of just started out with before the pandemic and then they started you know what happened right after and then we got to where we are now a more linear way of telling the story because we're jumping around all of the time it just feels a little jumbled to me Luckily for The Stand, a lot of its characters are extremely interesting and you do really want to get to know them to invest yourself further into the story. A couple of my favorites are Larry Underwood, played by Jovan Adepo. He is our resident rock star with a drug problem, and he's so interesting because he is relatable. He's very flawed, but he's also extremely strong, and he's one of those characters that you can expect to give a shoulder to lean on for some of these characters, so I immediately gravitated towards him. Another one of the characters that I loved, who I think is probably my favorite so far, is Henry Zaga's Nick Andros. He is our deaf messenger to the prophet Mother Abigail, and there is such tenderness he brings to this role, but also this sense of mystery, and I want to get to know him more and more because he is such a kind and wonderful human being, but you know there's something else uh, inside of him, so I'm really excited to see where the show goes with his character.
Owen Teague is also fantastic as Harold Louder. This is our incel who starts out as a character that you kind of pity, but his journey from becoming the scarred victim to the villain of the story is, I think, going to be a very interesting journey to take with him. And he could have played this role so hokey, but he actually brings a lot of depth to it. And we've got Whoopi Goldberg. I mean, I was so excited to see that she had taken on this role, and she is so perfectly cast. She plays the role as a very stoic, wise, and just this emblem of hope for these people, and I really hope that they give her more to do and more screen time in the rest of the season. So with the rest of the cast, we have James Marsden, who is literally playing every single character he's ever played before. He plays the everyman very well, but he's not notable to me. Uh, I do hope they give him more to do, but I don't think I'm gonna fall in love with his character or anything. We also have Alexander Skarsgård as Randall Flagg, who is our main villain of the story. He's extremely devilish and intimidating. But we haven't gotten to see a lot from him, but I do expect that we'll get more, and I do like what I've seen so far. We also have Odessa Young as Franny Goldsmith. Unfortunately, so far, she's really just kind of played the typical woman of the group who's part of this love triangle and also pregnant. I really do hope that they give her more to do because so far she's just very typical and cliche. Uh, but from what I've heard, her character definitely evolves. So looking forward to that. And last but not least, we have Nat Wolf's Lloyd Henry. He is given a huge chunk of episode two to to follow his backstory when he was going around robbing a bunch of stores uh, right after the pandemic hit. He is this idiotic, out of his mind fiend. And I was really looking forward to what happens with his character, especially after how it leaves off of episode two. But we've gotten absolutely nothing from him in episodes three and four. So I really hope they go back to his character because I'm really interested to see where that goes. The production value values on this show are out of this world. It is one of the most handsomely produced television projects I have seen in quite some time. The scope is absolutely epic. The desolate landscapes, the abandoned cities, there's this shot of the Brooklyn Bridge and it just zooms out to give us a wide shot of it and you just see all of the abandoned cars and the crashes and just all of New York and it's just a beautiful shot and it really really takes you into this apocalyptic world. You can really tell how big the scope of the series is by how many stories they are trying to tell. And unfortunately, I think that is the biggest detriment to this show so far, is the fact that there's so much exposition, so much buildup and character development, that there's this sense almost through these four episodes that nothing really has happened so far. So I am absolutely looking forward to the rest of this limited series, but something needs to happen right quick to get me invested further. So for our new segment, Lost in the Episode, we have a new rating scale. Basically, during our first impressions episode, we have four tiers of where we think this show is going and what we should recommend to you. Our first tier is must watch. This is pretty self-explanatory. That just means please just go out and watch it immediately. Our second tier is wait to binge. That means is kind of just wait until this season is over so you can binge the whole thing, but it's still a show you should absolutely check out. Our third tier is wait until our final review. This kind of means that we're iffy on the project and you should probably wait until our final thoughts to see if it's worth it to check out. And lastly, there is our skip it tier. And that means skip the damn thing. It's not even worth it. I think The Stand has so much potential. And in these first four episodes, I have really fallen in love with a lot of these characters, some of them more than others, but I have really invested myself in them and seeing where their story arcs go. Unfortunately for the show, they have done so much character building and given so much exposition that it almost feels like nothing has happened. They're really going to need to push on the acceleration and start this story up or people are really going to lose interest quick. So, 
I will be giving the stand weight to binge. I think this is a perfect rating for this show because so far, I think this is going to be a great one once it's finished for people to just be able to watch all the way through. But if you want to go on this journey with me, obviously, please tune in every Friday after the episodes have premiered so you can enjoy our spoiler recap and review. Thank you so much for watching Lost in the Episode. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like the video if you liked it, and also comment down below. We want to start having conversations about The Stand. Let us know what you think of it, if you've read the book, how you think it compares to the show, and let's just have a really healthy conversation about it. Thank you so much, guys. We will see you next time.